Our entire galaxy, the Milky Way, was most likely created through various collisions with much smaller galaxies over time. Something that most likely began approximately 13.5 billion years ago and will continue for many billion years to come. And as a result of this, our galaxy is basically made out of different generation of stars. And stars coming from various locations and potentially containing different material. With a lot of these stars created during various growth spurts in either Milky Way galaxy or galaxies that the Milky Way absorbed. And as a result of this, our galaxy is basically made out of different generations of stars. Some much younger, some extremely ancient. With some stars like HD 14283, more commonly known as the Methuselah star, even at some point believed to be as old as the universe itself. Some measurements even suggested that the star might be even older than the entire universe. But as the study from a few years back discovered, this is not so at all. This is definitely an ancient star, but it's not nearly as old as we believed. It's about 12 billion years old. Nevertheless, there are definitely quite a lot of ancient stars out there, and for many years now, really for many decades, the scientists were always trying to find better ways to find them in order to both confirm various ideas and to also try to figure out if we can maybe find the mysterious population 3 stars, the so-called first stars in the entire universe. And although there have been some suggestions from here and there, as of 2023, nothing so far has been discovered. But now we have this new intriguing study that just came out that was able to discover a huge amount of these ancient stars in the process proving a really important point. Most of the ancient stars in the entire galaxy seem to be actually hidden in the center of the galaxy, which is probably why it's so difficult to find them. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and so today we're going to be discussing this new study, focusing on exactly what the scientists discovered, how they discovered it, and what all of this means for astronomy. But let's just start with the visual representation of their discovery as presented by one of the press releases in the description. In a nutshell, this is what they actually found. Here you can see every one of these ancient stars in relation to the Sun, but also in relation to the rest of the galaxy. And each one of these stars seems to be really old, very likely formed in the first billion years of the existence of the universe, basically suggesting that they're over 12 billion years old, even older than the star I showed you previously, the Methuselah star. And for astronomers, the most exciting part here is where all of these stars were discovered. For many years, various studies were always suspecting that most of these old stars should be in the center of the galaxy. But the problem is, the center of the galaxy is, as you can see, extremely dusty. It even contains this area known as the zone of avoidance, which in a nutshell is just a bunch of dust that blocks everything behind it. And because this dust is a mixture of everything, including elements produced by various supernova, or even gas present from the beginning of the universe, trying to study anything here becomes very challenging. It's kind of like looking at this huge mixture of everything that represents a lot of noise, with maybe one or two stars inside of this, only producing like one tiny pixel. And so for many years this was always a huge challenge. And because a lot of this gas is also very high in metallicity, or basically contains elements that are not just hydrogen and helium, but also things like calcium, potassium, and even iron itself, this made things even more challenging because a lot of the data would often be contaminated. Nevertheless, many different predictions and many different ideas, especially ideas involving the evolution of galaxies, have always predicted that the most amount of ancient stars should be right in the center. And that's mostly because of the way that the galaxies grow from much smaller chunks. Technically, this should always end with the biggest amount of ancient stars in the center and some ancient stars in the halo of the galaxy as well. But the halo stars are relatively easy to find. And as a matter of fact, most of the ancient stars so far, some of the oldest stars even, have always been halo stars. But no such stars were ever found in the center as predicted by previous studies. But in the last decade or so, the amount of data coming from various telescopes increased exponentially. And telescopes like Gaia, or even some of the largest telescopes on the planet located in Hawaii, made things just a little bit easier. And so here the researchers began a project known as PIGS, Pristine Inner Galaxy Survey, uncovering most metal poor population in the inner Milky Way. It's actually a survey that's going to involve a lot of parts, including studying galaxies and studying gas outside of the Milky Way, but in this particular part of the study, they wanted to focus on these ancient stars. But the question is, how do you even identify anything here? There are like 400 if not more billion objects visible to various surveys. 
And that's of course for astronomers, where things get a little bit tricky, but also really intriguing. A few decades ago, someone discovered that there is an unusual correlation between iron and calcium. Or to be more exact, there is a correlation between amount of calcium and iron present in various stars. And that's because of the process that's responsible for creating both of them. And so if you find a ratio between calcium and, for example, hydrogen, it should be exactly the same as the ratio between iron and hydrogen, providing yet another way to measure what's known as metallicity, or essentially the ratio between heavier elements to elements like hydrogen and helium. But why calcium? Well, all this relates to another concept from the early 19th century known as the Fraunhofer lines, named after the person who discovered this idea. And so here, if you were to look at the sun, you would actually see these absorption lines visible in various frequencies of optical light. And all this is a result of various elements present in the atmosphere around the sun or even slightly outside of the sun. So for example, right here we have the absorption line of water from the tiny molecules of water present in the outer space between the sun and planet Earth. Here's how all of this would look like if you were to see it in color. And so each of these absorption lines represents a certain element. But the ones on the left, so-called KH lines, are the ones that the scientists realized are really important for astronomy, for measuring metallicity of stars. This is essentially lines produced by calcium. And so essentially by having just a little bit of calcium around the sun, the radiation from the sun, specifically the UV light, ionizes some of the calcium, making it absorb some parts of the light, with more calcium producing much deeper lines. Which in essence means that we can now technically measure calcium from any star out there. And because there is a correlation between calcium and iron, it then becomes possible to measure relatively accurate metallicity of any star out there. And so a lot of various telescopes on the planet have recently been adding new so-called calcium HK filters in the process allowing us to measure metallicity and by extension the age of the stars much much easier than before. And that's because the metallicity and the overall age of the star are obviously related. An extremely young star in the early universe was mostly made out of hydrogen and helium and did not contain much of anything else. But after multiple supernova and after enrichment from various molecular clouds created by these supernova, each of these stars became enriched in various elements and thus became more metallic. The Sun, for example, was most likely created from at least 40 different supernova. In contrast, that previous star I showed you, the Methuselah star, seems to contain at least 250 times less metallic elements than our Sun. And so by conducting this extensive survey, the scientists discovered at least 8,000 different candidates, eventually confirming 1,300 as essentially some of the lowest in metals stars in the entire galaxy. And because a lot of these stars were also available in the Gaia catalog, it then became possible to basically plot them on a kind of a three-dimensional map. In the process of discovering that many of them seem to have very slow galactic speeds and generally travel very very close to the center, at least half as close as the Sun. But some of them also seem to contain very eccentric orbits, very likely a result of previous collisions with various galaxies. And it looks like all of them probably existed in the galaxy since the very early days of the Milky Way, most likely for at least 12 billion years. But there are obviously still some unanswered questions. One obvious question is, how can these stars still exist? Why didn't these stars disappear? Why didn't they all go supernova by now? And why are they still around? Well, obviously one answer here is that some of these stars could be extremely low in mass, so they would never go supernova and technically should exist for billions and billions of years. But the thing is, with these types of stars, they would also not really produce that much light and would not even be that easily visible even using some of the most powerful surveys out there. Now obviously 1300 stars is nothing compared to like 400 billion stars in the entire galaxy, but still the question of why are these stars still here needs to be at some point answered. But the other more important question is, are any of these stars population 3 stars? The oldest or the first generation stars that created everything else. And these types of stars the astronomers have been trying to find for what seems to be forever now. There have been some signs here and there, but nothing concrete. And so taking a closer look at each of these stars sometime in the future is probably going to be pretty important as well. Basically in order to figure out if any of these stars could potentially be these ancient stars that formed in the beginning of the universe. At the moment though, it's not really clear and this is still a relatively new discovery. Nevertheless, at least it definitely confirms that the ancient stars do exist in the Milky Way and exactly where we kind of expected them to be. They seem to be almost at the center of the entire galaxy and they seem to be moving slow 
with some having somewhat eccentric orbits. Now we're not going to know anything else about these stars until future discoveries, but at least for now this is still pretty exciting and I'm definitely looking forward to hearing more about this, especially because some of the previous studies have even found stars inside this survey that seem to contain ridiculously low metallicity, thus potentially implying that maybe they are population 3 stars after all. The first stars in the entire universe. We're going to learn more in some of the future studies. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.